Have you ever noticed those floating things that cross your vision from time to time and wondered how you can get rid of them? In this episode of Aki Talk, Dr. Melissa Gray will be explaining eye floaters, what they actually are, and how they can be diagnosed and managed. Dr. Gray? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Please welcome Dr. Gray. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Melissa Gray. Dr. Gray, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, it's our pleasure to have you here, Dr. Gray. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, before we get started, I was hoping maybe you can introduce yourself to our audience. Let them know a little bit about your background and your specialty. So a little bit about me is that I was born and raised in South Florida. So I'm a South Florida native. Um, I'm a first generation Cuban American. So my family came from Cuba and I was the first one born here. Um, I am the first doctor in the family. I also have a son, he is 12 years old. Um, I'm working in my eye doctor in Miramar. So down here in South Florida, I don't really have a specialty per se. I'm doing primary care at this time. Um, the practice that I work at was a new acquisition. So we're dealing with just the change from private practice to my eye doctor. So adding in a bunch of things while we're doing that is kind of a lot. So whenever we settle down a little bit more, I plan to do more dry eye, my myopia control, contact lenses, things like that. So, Well, again, fantastic introduction, Dr. Gray. And again, thank you for joining us today. So for our discussion, we were hoping that maybe you can talk to us a little bit about eye floaters. And for those who may not know, what exactly are eye floaters? So the way that I typically explain eye floaters to my patients is that we have inside of our eye a jelly-like substance um, that fills it up. And when we're born, it's more of like a thick, viscous type of gel. And as we have more birthdays, as we age, it tends to liquefy a little bit more. And during that process, some of the cells uh, will clump together and it casts a shadow on the retina and you can see just little things floating around in your vision that it kind of looks like some people say little hairs little bugs just floating around um so that's mostly what floaters are um just like an overall summary well fantastic now that we know a little bit about eye floaters uh, what causes eye floaters to appear? Well, um, typically age, <laughs> typically age, um, but other things can cause floaters to appear, like certain pathologies that happen in the eye, um, nearsighted, a few things um, like that are, are the reasons that floaters can appear. Excellent information, Dr. Gray. And how common are they? Are, are they more common in younger or older adults? Yes. So it's very common overall. Um, it is more common in older people, but it can happen in younger people. I'm actually 33 and I have some floaters. I'm very nearsighted. So I just happen to have floaters, but it can happen, especially if something happens inside the eye um, at any age and the floaters appear. So it's not just a one and done type of thing for older patients. And that's it. It can happen throughout other ages too, but typically more common in the older population. Well, that's fantastic information, Dr. Gray. Thank you so much. And how long do they usually last in the eye? And can you get rid of them? So I typically tell my patients that once you have a floater, you have a little friend for life. <laughs> it usually hangs around. It's going to be there. Sometimes it will, you'll adapt to seeing it, not seeing it as much or not seeing them as often. But typically they're still going to be there depending on how large they are. Um, where they are, if they're floating a little bit away from the macula, there's, there's a couple things to it, but typically they're there. There's not really, um, something that you can get rid of or just go away per se, but, um, it's usually there once you have them. <laughs> Fantastic information, Dr. Gray. And how do you diagnose someone with eye floaters? Are, are there tests that you run in office for that? So in your general eye exam, I can diagnose floaters um, with dilation or imaging. So typically um, behind this lamp or the microscope, once you're dilated, your pupils are large. I can see the floaters um, sometimes, especially if they're large, like a posterior vitreous detachment, we can see that. Um, I've also with retinal imaging seen the floater. So you'll see it just plain as day on the 
on the retinal image. And sometimes I'll show the patient, I'm like, this is your floater. And they're actually, they get a pretty good kick out of it. They're validated that they're like, I'm not crazy. I do have something there and I'm here it is. So um, those are the two things, dilation, the retinal imaging is how we can diagnose the floaters. Excellent information, Dr. Gray. And if someone does have eye floaters, when should they come and see you? So if a patient is telling me that they see floaters, especially new floaters, and if they're accompanied with flashing lights, then we want you to see an eye care provider immediately because sometimes floaters can be a sign of pathology, something happening within the eye that needs to be ruled out with the dilation, with the retinal imaging, the whole, the whole thing needs to be checked because it could just be benign floater, but it also could be something worse. So in order to do that, it should be checked by um, an eye care provider. Fantastic information. And uh, is there a way to prevent eye floaters from actually happening? So I'm not sure if there's any proven way to prevent floaters, but I imagine a healthy diet, hydration, the vitreous is made up of largely of water. So um, hydration, not smoking pre to prevent premature aging, um, possibly taking a bromelain supplement. There, I have seen something about bromelain being a supplement of pineapple enzyme that can reduce vitreous opacities. Um, so that's another thing, but no hard and fast way to prevent floaters, but there's a few things that you can try to stop them from happening, but otherwise not having trauma. <laughs> Fantastic information. And another question that I had was, um, can eye floaters be associated with something more serious, like a more serious eye condition? Yes. Um, best case scenario, a floater is a floater and it's benign and she just lives there <laughs> in your eye and nothing is happening. However, floaters can be a symptom of a retinal attachment, tear, hole, and inflammation in the uh, of the eye, uh, vitreous hemorrhaging. There are some conditions that need to be ruled out, like I said, when, when someone tells you that there's floaters. So some more serious things can be happening if a floater appears. Uh, and so, uh, is there anything that you'd like to let our audience know about before we leave, Dr. Gray? No, I appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. Um, and just always remember to see your eye care provider annually for a dilated eye exam or sooner if you're experiencing the new floors, flashing lights, vision loss, anything like that. Um, any of the symptoms that we spoke about beforehand, very important. So fantastic information, Dr. Gray. Thank you so much, everyone. That was Dr. Melissa Gray. Dr. Gray, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.